We were going for medals as well. Nikki Gooch with Matt Jasper on the first day of the short track speed skating. Day 11 in Nagano. getting crowded. Good evening, along with the short track speed skating and the skiing, other action we're bringing you from the past 24 hours includes USA and Canada, the final of the first ever Olympic women's ice hockey. But Britain came to these games with few real medal hopes. One of the strongest was short track speed skater Nicky Gooch, who was keen to improve on the bronze medal he took in the 500 metres in Lillehammer. Today saw the 1,000 metres, eight heats, with the top two in each going through to the quarterfinals. Nicky was going in heat five. Commentary from Paul Dickinson. pace may suit Nikki Gooch. He's a very fine sprinter over 500 metres. And I'm certain in this event, the 1,000, he will want to make amends for what happened four years ago. He did pass the finishing line in second place, only to be disqualified for a mistake that he made uncharacteristically by overtaking somebody in the inside of a bend. It was that disappointment, really, which then sent him into the 500 metres with added impetus and added vigor, and he came away with a bronze medal. He dearly loved to go one better in these Olympic Winter Games. Five and a half laps to go. Nikki Gooch in the lead. Kim Dong Sung, this brilliant 17-year-old from Korea, world champion already over 1,000 meters. Drolet of Canada in third place. Four laps to go now. Kim leads. Gooch now in third place as Drolet, the Canadian, goes through on the inside. This is really hotting up. Gooch mustn't get out of touch. He goes very, very wide there. Now then, with just two laps to go, Nicky Gooch has got a lot of work to do. He's just tucked in behind Kim. The Canadian leads. Kim in second place. Nicky Gooch of Great Britain in third. They take the bell. This is looking ominous for Great Britain and Nicky Gooch. The Canadian is going to win it just from the Korea. Nicky Gooch comes through a disconsolate third. And that perhaps confirms the rumors, the speculation about Nicky's health. Normally, in that sort of company, well, we know that this is a precarious sport, but he could have almost been guaranteed to come through and certainly qualify for the quarterfinal stages. I did the right things at the right time when I was racing. I was, I was doing, you know, going to plan. Everything was going right. It's just when I wanted to turn on the speed, and when the speed picked up, I was just, uh, I was dead. I just didn't have any, any change of speed. I was just very flat. And I, you know, we don't know why yet. You know, we have to look into it and uh, analyze what went wrong. Um, if anything, I mean, I, you know, I've been ill before. You know, when we first got here, I was out of training for a week or so. And that, that could be it, because it's not really the ideal preparation that we'd normally do to come into a, co a major competition like this. Um, it could be other things, you know. You, it's hard to it's hard to say. It just wasn't my day today, and I didn't didn't have the legs for it. Well, that's a worrying statement. Joining us in the studio, former British international Jamie Fern. Jamie, um, it is worrying if he doesn't feel that that he's strong. Yeah, like like Nicky said, he he made he made all the right moves. Um, he went out with a positive approach. But uh, he didn't look comfortable when the, uh, the Canadian and the Korean were stepping the pace up. Yes, he, he seemed to be with them up until sort of the last four laps. Really. Yeah, initially, when, when the pace started to go a bit faster, Nicky did uh, start to slip. And uh, about three to go, he actually had, had a bit of a bad bend and went, went rather wide. We're seeing there, he just went wide to uh, yeah, get a bit more speed. But that, that ended up taking him even, even further wide. And 
He lost about five yards. He's, he's caught back up there, but he's, he's starting to panic and tense up. And he's not really skating. His line is uh, he's struggling to stay on the back of him, really. It is a tough group, but uh, the, or a tr tough heat that he was skating in, but he, he really should have been with them at the end. Yeah, and, and on form, Nicky Gooch would, would have been, been there. And when he did put the hammer down with about three laps to go, that normally you see Nicky go to the, hit the front. Uh, but in that instance, he, he, he tried to open up. But uh, like I said, there was just nothing there at, at that point in time. And he struggled off the back and tensed up from there on. Well, he says that the 1000 is his favourite event, but uh, he did get a medal in the 500 at Lillehammer. You know, what hopes now? Because he's, got, he's only got a couple of days before the heat start there. That's right. Hope, hopefully now they can, they can analyse it. Um, he's got a day's rest tomorrow. Um, hopefully he can get his, his head together with the, uh, the team psychologist and uh, hopefully he can turn it around like he did four years ago and turn it into a medal. Do you think for him it'll be more rest than, than training? Does he need to sort of rebuild confidence? Because that seems to be lacking. Obviously. Yeah, I, I think um, part of it would be psychological, having been ill in, uh, in Nagano for, for a week or so and not being able to train properly. Um, yes, he needs to come overcome some psychological barriers. But like you said, if there's nothing actually there at that point of time when he wanted the speed, but um, it, it, he'll need it there straight away from the gun on 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 Thursday, so let's hope he can get together for then. Yes, we all hope for that. Thanks very much for the moment, Jamie. So, Gooch out. Britain had Matt Jasper, though. Here's what happened in the rest of that 1,000-metre competition. And Yulong of China in the lead. Davis Stieg, who incidentally is coached by Great Britain's Wolf O'Reilly. And uh, O'Reilly's influence has certainly paid dividends because Vestig recently broke the world record for the 500 metres. Matthew Jasper, an Olympian back in 1992, missed out in 1994, which has made him even more determined to do well here. He's a very fine skater, the Nottingham man, former European champion in fact and those three skaters Vestig, Anne and Jasper have got away from the Mongolian five laps to go China leads Great Britain in second place the Netherlands in third the Netherlands of course keen to carry on the tradition laid down already in these Olympic Winter Games by their long track colleagues Vestig goes blistering around the outside, came into contact with the Chinese skater, and Matt Jasper gets the inside line just. That's good. Good thinking by Matt Jasper, very sharp indeed. Jasper leads, An Yu Long of China in second. Dave Vestig now is the, the skater in trouble. They'll hear the bell this time. Matt Jasper in first place, An Yu Long of China in second. This is looking good for Great Britain at the moment. Jasper is going to win it, and it'll be a photograph for second between Vestig and Anu Long of China. But what Nicky Gooch could not do in the previous heat, Matt Jasper has made sure he's done enough to get himself through to the quarterfinal. It's an electric atmosphere in the white ring for the quarterfinals of the men's 1,000 metres. Matt Jasper is there in the first quarter final and he really has drawn a tough one Jasper along with Tarao of Japan Mark Ganyan the world record holder from Canada and Lee Jun Kwan of Korea nine laps of this very very fast ring and just two will go through to the semi-final well, Matt certainly took the initiative in the heat. He's tucked in there in last place at the moment. Mark Gagnon goes through, the tallest man in the field. He always looks very relaxed and very comfortable leading from the front. To Rao Japan in second place, Matt Jasper cruising through into third. And the career...